The Broken Window from the book Essays on Political Economy by the late M. Frederick Bastiat, published in 1874, in the section of the book entitled That Which Is Seen and That Which Is Not Seen. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Broken Window Have you ever witnessed the anger of the good shopkeeper, James B., when his careless son happened to break a pane of glass? If you have been present at such a scene, you will most assuredly bear witness to the fact that every one of the spectators, were there even thirty of them, by common consent, apparently, offered the unfortunate owner this invariable consolation. It is an ill wind that blows nobody good. Everybody must live, and what would become of the glaziers if panes of glass were never broken? Now, this form of condolence contains an entire theory which it will be well to show up in this simple case, seeing that it is precisely the same as that which, unhappily, regulates the greater part of our economical institutions. Suppose it costs six francs to repair the damage, and you say that the accident brings six francs to the glazier's trade, that it encourages that trade to the amount of six francs, I grant it. I have not a word to say against it. You reason justly. The glazier comes, performs his task, receives his six francs, rubs his hands, and in his heart blesses the careless child. All this is that which is seen. But if, on the other hand, you come to the conclusion, as is too often the case, that it is a good thing to break windows, that it causes money to circulate, and that the encouragement of industry in general will be the result of it, you will oblige me to call out, Stop there! Your theory is confined to that which is seen. It takes no account of that which is not seen. It is not seen that as our shopkeeper has spent six francs upon one thing, he cannot spend them on another. It is not seen that if he had not had a window to replace, he would perhaps have replaced his old shoes or added another book to his library. In short, he would have employed his six francs in some way which this accident has prevented. Let us take a view of industry in general, as affected by this circumstance. The window being broken, the glazier's trade is encouraged to the amount of six francs. This is that which is seen. If the window had not been broken, the shoemaker's trade, or some other, would have been encouraged to the amount of six francs. This is that which is not seen. And if that which is not seen is taken into consideration, because it is a negative fact, as well as that which is seen, because it is a positive fact, it will be understood that neither industry in general nor the sum total of national labor is affected whether windows are broken or not. Now let us consider James B. himself. In the former supposition, that of the window being broken, he spends six francs and has neither more nor less than he had before, the enjoyment of a window. In the second, were we to suppose the window not to have been broken, he would have spent six francs in shoes, and would have had at the same time the enjoyment of a pair of shoes and of a window. Now, as James B. forms a part of society, we must come to the conclusion that, taking it all together and making an estimate of its enjoyments and its labors, it has lost the value of the broken window. Whence we arrive at this unexpected conclusion. Society loses the value of things which are uselessly destroyed, and we must ascend to a maxim which will make the hair of protectionists stand on end. To break, to spoil, to waste, is not to encourage national labor, or more briefly, destruction is not profit. What will you say, moniteur industrial? What will you say, disciples of good M. F. Shamans, who has circulated with so much precision how much trade would gain by the burning of Paris from the number of houses it would be necessary to rebuild? I am sorry to disturb these ingenious calculations as far as their spirit has been introduced into our legislation, but I beg him to begin them again by taking into account that which is not seen and placing it alongside of that which is seen. 
the reader must take care to remember that there are not two persons only but three concerned in the little scene which i have submitted to his attention one of them james b represents the consumer reduced by an act of destruction to one enjoyment instead of two another under the title of the glazier shows us the producer whose trade is encouraged by the accident the third is the shoemaker or some other tradesman whose labor suffers proportionably by the same cause it is this third person who is always kept in the shade and who personating that which is not seen is a necessary element of the problem it is he who shows us how absurd it is to think we see a profit in an act of destruction it is he who will soon teach us that it is not less absurd to see a profit in a restriction which is after all nothing else than a partial destruction therefore if you will only go to the root of all the arguments which are adduced in its favor all you will find will be the paraphrase of this vulgar saying what would become of the glaziers if nobody ever broke windows end of the broken window by frederick bastiat recording by michelle fry baton rouge louisiana in september 2018